Unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth, and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the Word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the Word. Let's worship God. 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 Come on, just worship God. Just worship God. Somebody speak in other tongues. Worship God. Somebody launch deeper. Launch deeper. Launch deeper. Launch deeper. Launch deeper. Come on, launch deeper. Launch deeper. Launch deeper. Launch deeper. Come on, somebody speak to God. 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 Come on, speak to God. 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 The presence of God is here. God is here to heal. God is here to deliver. God is here to set free. God is here to strengthen. God is here to uphold. God is here. God is here.
sick in your body, if you're sick in your body, if you're sick in your body, I want you to hold where it's pain. Hold that part where the pain is. I want to pray for the sick. I want to pray for the sick. Lay hands where it's painting. Are you sick? Right now in the name of Jesus. Power is about to move. Hold where it's painting. In the name of Jesus Christ. We rebuke and bind and destroy every spirit of infirmity and disease. We command all sickness to lose you right now in the name of Jesus. Whether it's a pain, whether it's a growth. I feel God is doing something like that. I feel God is healing somebody right now. Right now, this very moment as we are speaking. Listen. If you came with a swelling in your body, I want you to touch there. I feel swellings are disappearing. Whether it's in your armpits, your breasts, wherever it is. I feel up no more growths are disappearing right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Right this very moment. I feel God is healing somebody. I feel God is healing bone issues right now. In the name of Jesus. 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 If you feel any something funny, if you feel you came with something and you don't feel it there anymore, I want you to raise up your hand. Because I feel God is healing somebody. Check it. Check yourself and say, I came with a swelling, I don't feel it. Come, come. Wherever you are, come and testify. I feel swellings are disappearing. Abnormal swellings. Eh? Come, come, come and testify. Come and testify quickly. I feel abnormal growths are going. Any abnormal growths on you? Anybody else? I feel God is healing somebody like that. Check yourself. If you came with a swelling in your breast, your stomach, on any part of your body, I feel God is healing somebody like that. I feel God is healing somebody like that. Check yourself. If it's gone, you come. I feel God is healing somebody like that. And I still feel there's another person. Check yourself. Check yourself. I feel abnormal growths are living. I feel abnormal growths are living. Clap for Jesus. Clap for Jesus. I feel they are living. Clap for Jesus. Where is the mic? Start to testify. Praise God. Uh, the swelling in my throat like I could not swallow well even talking my voice had changed but even when we were worshipping I couldn't shout like so much but right now I can swallow without any pain even clap for Jesus pain. praise God praise God yeah I've been sick my, my, my eggs were swelling Did your testicles yeah. they were swollen they are swelling for three months but I thank God I'm now okay. They have gone back. <laughs> I turn all the glory back to Jesus. The things have gone back. <laughs> and, and when miracles are happening, like this, direct that power to your issue. It does not need to be sickness. Yeah. I've had stomach aches for about six years now. Some on and off thing. It's so you came with pain today? Yeah. You feel healed? Yeah. Somebody clap for Jesus. I've been having swelling, sort of like two months, and I've been developing in my body. Uh, I came with one on my thigh behind, but it's disappeared. I do not What's feel this? it. What, what was the size of it? Sorry? What was the size of it? It was... 
like this. It wasn't like very big, but they've been developing. Even last Thursday I had one. When you prayed for the sick people, it didn't disappear then. But when I got home the next day, it had dried up. So today I had another one on my leg behind. It's also disappeared. I had one on my breast. It disappeared also. I'm so Praise grateful God. to God. <laughs> Praise God. Tell your neighbor Jesus is alive. Praise the Lord. I had uh, a sharp pain from Monday in my left breast. And whenever I could touch the lower part of my breast, I would feel as if I have two small, small hard things. But now when they told us to touch where it hurts and after he said come and testify I, t- I tested and I had nothing praise God anybody else praise God my name is Daphne I had a swelling on my private parts and then for the past two weeks it's been so painful and very big then I had severe breast pain but I didn't tell anyone because I was doing my exam the past two weeks but today I came since I reached I've been checking my whole body. I can't feel nothing. I couldn't put my legs on the table. Swellings are disappearing. Praise God. I've had a swelling in my armpit, internal. I could feel it every time in the morning for the past one and a half months. And when Apostle was saying Everywhere. swellings are disappearing I was not paying attention and then I just felt something being uprooted then I sat down then I touched it, I pressed, I pressed five and I started hurting myself, there was nothing so I praise God praise God, hallelujah <laughs> quickly, what is uh, she had a severe skin irritation where she would scratch herself, you can even see the skin. Yeah, I see. And the irritation. You came scratching yourself. Yeah. Now you don't feel it the anymore. Irritation is gone. Somebody clap for Jesus. Praise God. Next. Yeah. This lady had a severe pain in her breast. In her breast. Yes, she had a severe pain in her breast. <laughs> and under the foot. And under the foot. Yes. And some uh, some sort of paralysis. Paralysis on yes. the left. Yeah. And and she's now very okay. Praise God. She Somebody clap for Jesus. Jesus. Yes. Next, this this lady had uh, abdominal pains for the last two years. She's totally ill. Two years, two years, two years, three, two years. Last two, two years. years, they're totally gone. Immediately, you say they've disappeared. Somebody clap for Jesus. This gentleman has a testimony. He had an accident, and the car rolled three times, but nothing happened to him because of the gospel. Because of the gospel. <laughs> Yeah. Apostle, this gentleman had cornea ulcer. It's a, it's a wound in the eye. Yeah. So he had pain in those eyes and now he is free. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody clap for Jesus. All that pain is gone. Clap for Jesus. Praise God. Now I want you to direct this power to anything you're believing God for and fix it right now in the name of Jesus. Can you fix it? Can you fix it yourself? Yourself yourself in the name of Jesus Christ your diabetes high blood pressure go back and they check you in the name of Jesus Christ somebody say amen clap for Jesus there's something I'm feeling if you are I'm feeling like God is opening spiritual ears and eyes eh? I don't know who. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Somebody's about to start hearing like they've never heard before. Right now, in the name of Jesus, the Holy Ghost is anointing you for this. You're going to hear like you've never heard before. Power of the Holy Ghost. Power of the Holy Ghost. Sweet as Jesus. Sweet Jesus. What a wonder. You are brighter.
also needs the prophetic too. <laughs> You're going to hear that you've never heard. You're going to see like you've never seen. You're going to walk in the spirit. Let's open our Bibles to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verses 3. I want to share something very special. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verses 3. Are we there? Are we there? Are we there? Now the Bible says, if our gospel be hid, tell your neighbor, if our gospel be hid. Yes. The Bible says that if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Give me the amplified of the same. If our gospel, the glad tidings, also be hidden, that is obscured, covered up with a veil that hinders the knowledge of God, the Bible says, it is hidden only to those who are perishing and obscured, only to those who are spiritually dying. Now, I want you to hear that. The Bible is not talking about spiritually dead. The Bible is talking about spiritually dying, present continuous. Right? And veiled only to those who are lost. So it's addressing two kinds of people. One kind of people are people which are lost. There's another kind of people which are in the process of spiritually dying. Praise the Lord Jesus. And the next verse says, For the God of this world has blinded the unbelievers' minds that they should not discern the truth, preventing them from seeing the illuminating light of the gospel of the glory of Christ the Messiah, who is the image and likeness of God. Somebody say Amen. Amen. Now, when the Bible says that it is hid to them which are dying, I want you to understand that there is a gospel that is open. Right? And there is a gospel that is hidden. Can I say it again? There is a gospel that is open And there is a gospel that is hidden. There are two kinds of gospels that I've seen in this world. There is a gospel that seems open and known, generally. And there is a gospel that seems hidden. And it's hid for a truth. It is hid. It is hid. There is a gospel that is hid. People say, well, we are born again. Yes, we are all born again. People say we are believers. Yes, I believe. All of us are believers. But there, 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 is, there is a certain message that is hid. It is hid. And it seems like when men quote scriptures and read from the same Bible, many assume that they are actually preaching the same gospel. But there is a difference between what is hidden and what is open. And I'll explain that in a while. There are things that I've heard over there. Ask people pray, preach about, share. I'm youngest teach other in fellowship. Sometimes when we sit to share certain things, there are things that resonate generally as general knowledge, and they carry the form to be true, but they are not actually true. They are just reasonable. Some people think that the more reasonable something appears in the gospel, they think that it is true. They think that to the degree of how reasonable something is, therefore, it is true. Right? They try to figure out God in a human kind of thinking. And when their mind makes sense that something is, is, is reasonable, then they can assert and say, I think this is the truth about this. And sadly, we have many Christians who ride along what is reasonable, but not what is true. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me show you something. There's a scripture that I know many of you have read, but I want to open something out. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 12. Give me the Amplified of the same. Now, let me show you something. The Bible says that now we have not received the spirit that belongs to the world. Are you with me? He says we have not received the spirit that belongs to the world. But the Holy Spirit, who is from God. And I want to show you what's serious about this. And it says, given to us that 
we might realize, the Bible says, and comprehend and appreciate, the Bible says, the gifts of divine favor and blessings so freely and lavishly bestowed upon us. Now listen to that. We did not receive the Spirit, which is of this world, the Bible says, but the Holy Spirit, who is from God. And the Bible says, and He was given to us that we might realize, number one, that we might comprehend and appreciate, the Bible says, the gifts of divine favor and blessing so freely and lavishly bestowed on us by God. We did not receive the Spirit, which is of this world. So He starts to draw the difference between the Spirit of this world and the Spirit, which is of God. And He says that, when you're talking about the spirituals of God, the day you receive the Holy Spirit, God starts to release, He starts to reveal to you the things that were freely and lavishly bestowed on you. That's the beginning of the Holy Spirit. That means that when a man says that I've received the Spirit which is of God, every distinction of revelation does not point them into the things they must have, it casts light into the things that they have in God. Are you hearing me? So the beginning of that walk in God begins when, from day one, God starts to introduce this person to their abundance, not to their lack. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Because the spirit of this world always points you to lack. Because lack is a revelation. Lack is not a state. Lack is a revelation. I don't know if you understand what I mean. Lack is not necessarily the state that I don't have money, I don't have this or that. No. Lack is a revelation. What is revealed to you is the state called lack. Some people think that I lack money because you lack. Oh, I lack this, I lack strength, I lack divine health, I lack this, I'm not married, oh, I'm believing you, God, I lack this. But you see, if you understand that lack is lack, L-S-C-K, is a revelation, you realize that something in this world casts a certain light on your spirit. And that light on your spirit gave the revelation of what it was. When Adam and Eve were in the garden, the Bible says that they were naked and unashamed. Right? When they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the Bible says immediately they realized they were naked. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Their eyes of the spirit were shifted from one dispensation of knowledge and revelation to another dispensation of knowledge and revelation. That's why God asks the guy, who told you you're naked? Who told you? Who told you? How did you know you are? I didn't say it. Where, where you are dwelling, I, I, I didn't say that, that how did you know you are? Did you do something wrong there? Why? Because you can imagine two people who are naked walking together and the what they are unashamed mean, they are not conscious that they are naked. That means according to the dispensation they were functioning in, the eyes of their spirits could not see nakedness, even when they were naked. That means they were clothed by something. And that clothing carried a certain distinction in the spirit realm. Now here it is that they've eaten something, and after eating it, they become conscious. Hey, we're naked. And what do they do? They start to what? Hide themselves. Something was revealed to them that they didn't know before. And the fact that from that day it resonated in their spirits that they are naked. Another system was burst in their souls without knowing it. And the Bible says they covered themselves. Right? With what? With leaves. And God said, okay, let me kill some blood provisional and cover you. And cover you fully. This covering was spiritual. I don't know if I'm making sense. The lack of clothes, the lack of covering was a revelation. I don't know that you understand what I'm saying. You don't lack because you don't have. You lack because something in this world revealed to you that you lack. It's the spirit which is of this world. You're not disadvantaged because you're really disadvantaged. No, you are disadvantaged because something in this world revealed to you disadvantageness. And sadly, it creeps in unawares in the Gospels. Men preach. 
Christians are more conscious of the other spirit of the world, like the men of the world, because even in the church, we don't reveal and cast light in truth. We reveal and cast light according to our sensual state of revelation. And I will explain that more. Let's go our art in Corinthians. So when he says that when you receive the Holy Spirit, he reveals to you the things that were freely given. It means at the beginning of salvation, they tell you, now you've entered life, right? And that's the beginning of your work. For us, when they were raising us up, when you became born again, they started to show you everything lacking in you. You understand what I'm saying? Then they say, uh, I think now that you've become born again, first, first for 20 days, and been the presence of God. All right? Now, in the time when the sincere babes, right? As sincere as babes, the Bible says you require or desire the sincere milk of the word. In the time when men are supposed to first understand Christ, in the primary principles of the oracles, at that particular point we were fasting. But the knowledge that was given to us in the first was supposed to start making us access certain things which we were told we don't have. And that was the life. Are you hearing me? That was the life. And that is why to many saints the word never grew in them. It never grew in their spirit. Because that's where we began from. Our consciousness was in lack. I don't have this. I don't, I don't carry this. I am empty here. Now let me believe God to start doing certain things. What do I do? Fast. Let me pray. Let me do it. And it doesn't mean that we don't fast. We do fast. But it's one thing for a man to fast out of abundance and a man to fast out of lack. It's one thing for a man to pray out of lack and it's another for a man to pray out of the fullness. Somebody say amen. So we were conscious because the spirit of this world Always tells you you don't have. When you were going to school, your parents always told you, we have to remind you we are poor. <laughs> don't pray. We use books. You understand? So you go with the consciousness that we are poor. We are trying to become rich. And that is okay if you're not born again. But if you're a parent and you're born again and your children, man, tell them go to school and excel. Not because we are poor. But because you just have to excel. That's who we are. It's in our nature to excel. So, we were made conscious of our inabilities. And therefore, all our lives of salvation, they are teaching us 20 steps of being this, 75 steps of being this, 16 steps of being that, and we're all conscious of what we don't have to do to carry. Yet the true distinction of the revelation of the Spirit of God is the things that were freely given. In other words, you're supposed to be having this constant walk with God where every morning you're discovering, ah, yeah, even that is free. Wow. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Even that is free. Wow. What about that? It's also free too. Wow. You see, that's the life of salvation. But that gospel is hidden. It is hidden. Next verse. Let's continue to, uh, in Corinthians, where we're at the gospel. Uh -huh. And we are, the Bible says, Paul, setting these truths forth in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Holy Ghost. That means that the Holy Spirit speaks in a certain kind of language. He has certain words he speaks. But the words that he speaks are not in human wisdom. Are you hearing me? And he says, combining... And interpreting spiritual truths with spiritual language. That means the spiritual, there's a spiritual language. There's a language in the spirit spoken. But when you compare that language of the spirit and the wisdom of this world, it cannot match. Why? Because this language is drawn against the, 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 the wisdom which is of God. Praise the Lord. And it says that we combine spiritual truths with spiritual language to those who possess the Holy Ghost. Now, the beginning of the things that are freely given unto you start to come through by a certain illumination of a certain language in the Spirit. But that language does not and cannot relate with a human language because the human language and the wisdom which is of men, the Bible says, each shall be brought to note or nothing. You know, it's everything that is human language, everything that is of human language, it has a limitation. It has an expiry date. 
But whatever is eternal is of the Spirit of God and is given to you by God. The Bible is very clear. It cannot leave. It cannot leave. He says the giftings and callings of God are without repentance. He does not withdraw from whosoever he giveth it to. When he says that I've given you this gift, when he says that I've given you the gift of life, he cannot take it back. He can't wake up and say, ah, now you have done this. Let me take it away. No, that's the wisdom which is of this world. He knew you. And he chose you anyway. Are you hearing me? When God was dealing with Abraham, and he had to be the father of faith, he realized that if Abraham was seen through a certain lens, he was going to destroy his offspring. And the Bible says in the scriptures for us, seeing that God would justify the Gentiles through faith, he says he went afore and preached this gospel to Abraham, telling him in thee shall all nations be blessed. Because he needed a certain mindset for Abraham to have before he would release a particular blessing in his spirit. There's a certain way you have to see because before God releases certain things in your spirit. Because if he releases them through a carnal vision, you're bound to destroy things. The vision of the spirit world from God has a certain order. And it has principles that you cannot frustrate. For example, the Bible says, write down your vision. Whether you want it or not, at a particular point, when you start to see what God has placed in your spirit, you must learn to write. Even God wrote down the vision for the church. Hallelujah. One Joseph Simmons gives a story. He was raised in a very poor environment in Queens. Some of you have been to Queens, you would know how poor they are. And one time he saw a very beautiful house on a, on, a, on a top of a hill. Very beautiful house. And he was a very little boy. Very young boy. And then he says in a story that he, I think it was eight or nine or something. And then he says in a story, he wrote on a piece of paper and wrote the letter to the guy who owned the house. And he told him, sir, one day I will buy your house. Signed, Joseph Simmons. He took it. And slipped it under the, the door. And this guy read it. And the guy says, for some random reason, this man kept that paper. He also doesn't know why, but he did. So years later, the story says that many years he remembered that he had, he had always wanted to buy that particular house. He had grown up, gotten money. And so he goes to the same house years later. And then he finds that the old man had died. So he knocks, he finds the son. And he tells him, I wrote a note to your father before he died that I was going to buy this house one day. And the young man told him, my father, before he died, he gave me that note and told me there's somebody who wrote on this paper many years ago. I don't know why they wrote it. And I don't know why. There was a power that had to make this guy pick, keep this paper. Are you hearing me? Now, Joseph Simmons did not say it because he had money. He carried a certain revelation. Are you hearing me? He did not say it because he, he had the ability or that he was sure of what next week was going to look like. But he was persuaded in his spirit the ability to get what he wants since he was a little boy. That is what I'm trying to talk about. Now, you don't lack, not because you, you were raised in a poor family. It's because you have not appropriated the principles as they ought to be. The Holy Spirit is available to reveal to you all the things that are freely given to us by Christ. Now, there's a man who's going to work hard for something. And there's a man who's just going to wake up and believe for the same thing. And believe me, it will come to a man who believes. It will come to a man who believes. It's how your wiring is. People are not poor because they don't work. There are people who work even twice. Two times more than the people above them. Some of you have worked in private companies or public companies or modernized entities. You understand what I mean. The top bosses give the biggest bonuses. They just sign on small papers. And there's this guy down stamping. I didn't have lunch. You understand? The whole day, they even get ulcers because they've not eaten. And, and then they... Tell your neighbor, luck is a revelation. Like blessing. Like blessing. Like blessing. So, 
when he says that there's a place where the Spirit of God starts to speak a certain language, it means that when a man says, I am hearing God speak, the first thing that God starts to imprint in your spirit is consciousness to the freely given things and the things God has lavishly given. That's the first consciousness of every man who has believed on God. There's that consciousness that starts to come in your spirit. When you say, I had God, right? The beginning, you start to feel like there's stuff that is just yours. Simply because you believed. Simply because you believed. So your mind starts to be renewed, like the scriptures say, through the reading of the word. To know that good, acceptable and perfect will of God concerning your life. Because if you don't do that, the Bible says you cannot fulfill the necessary, useful, distinct service in the ministration of the things of God. You have to learn to be conscious and your spirit has to yield to, to what is free in God. Every time I go in the presence of God, I'm conscious of what is free for me, not what I don't have. It doesn't mean that there are no situations where you look around and see lack in a certain area. It does not mean that when you see lack, it means that you'll eat. It, it can only be you when you carry it in your spirit and think that, I don't know whether I'm speaking to somebody, but there's a gospel I hear many times in our saints, which always opens our eyes to lack. Every time saints are taught what they lack, they are conscious about what they lack. It's in the songs, we are, we are singing things, God help me. You, you understand? Every time we are in the presence of God, we are conscious of what men don't have. Why? Because we move by sight and not by faith. I've realized that many Christians visit where they ought to stay. They visit where they ought to stay. They, they just get a nice sermon and they get excited and say, ah, yeah, 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 today the guy preached, ah, yeah, 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 you understand? And then they're excited for one week, and then after two weeks, they're back in the same old shack. Why? Because they don't understand that when you receive Christ, the Bible says, live ye in him. As you received him, walk ye in him. Don't be separated from him. Because of situations and circumstances. There are things that Christ is not conscious about. Why are you conscious about these things? Why are you conscious about these things? It doesn't mean that around you there are not going to be things that are lacking. That's, can I call it, inconsequential. It's without consequence that there are certain things you don't see in your life. But it's another when it starts to get revealed to you that you actually don't have those things. Because that is not the wisdom which is of God. And it's not the gospel which is of the kingdom. Now, let's continue. I need to show you something. And so, he says, we set these truths forth in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Holy Ghost, combining and interpreting spiritual truths with spiritual language to those who possess the Holy Spirit. And he says, but the natural man, the non-spiritual man, does not accept or welcome or admit into his heart the gifts and teachings and revelations of the Spirit of God, for they are folly, meaningless, nonsense to him, and he is incapable, he is incapable, the Bible says, of knowing them, of progressively recognizing understanding and becoming better acquainted with them. What are those truths? The freely given stuff. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. The total sum of everything free in Christ. When you preach it to a natural man, the Bible says non-spiritual. He cannot accept. Now hey, apostle, you just tell me, you just sit there and the things come. Uh -huh. <laughs> No, they just don't come. You have to do something. No, 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 no. You don't have to do something except to believe. No. But, Apostle, no. There, is, you, there are certain things you have to add on inside there. That is why when he's talking about our father Abraham and he realizes the responsibility he has towards us as his children, the Bible says he imputes unto him a righteousness by faith. Before even the world understood the distinction. He says, no. If I should move in a world and function fully with these guys, let me make their father a certain way. I cannot put him under a certain legal requirement. I have to impute a righteousness on him while yet uncircumcised. And the Bible says, did he recon circumcision? Did he recon the blessing or the promise? Did he fulfill it while Abraham was circumcised or yet 
and circumcised. And the Bible says, and he imparted unto him righteousness and circumcised. And he received circumcision, the Bible says, as a seal of the righteousness that he had while yet uncircumcised. You are rich before you make money. Say that when the money comes, it's a seal of the wealth you had while you didn't have. That is our father, Abraham. That is the part on him that did not stagger when Paul speaks. When the Bible says that he staggered not at the promise, but he was fully persuaded, God revealed himself to this guy and convinced him that the dispensation that is coming, it has to resonate in every man's spirit. It's not about what you do. It's about what I want to do. Why aren't you more conscious about what I want to give you than what you want to do for me to give you? You're taught wrongly. You're taught wrongly. You find yourself lacking in delivery and then you start to explain your lack based on what you see. And you say, I, I think God is not moving in my life because I'm not, I'm not doing this. And then you think that by doing it, God is going to move more in your life. Or probably you have done it and still not seen results. And your brain tells you, maybe I need to do more than I've been doing uh, be- because I need to, <laughs> to touch the heart of God, right? And then you see guys who go on prayer mountains and then they spend 20 days there. Not that it's wrong. But me, I can't go on prayer mountain to seek for certain things. I can't. Because every time I read my Bible, the Spirit is always reminding me of what is free. I feel like I'm breaking divine law. (laughs) Over, can I say something? Thank you. Philip. Philip, you remember Philip when he was dealing with an Ethiopian eunuch, right? And the Bible says that he was, he was, he baptized the guy, and the Bible says when he gets him out of the water, he disappears. You remember that story? And the Bible says that he was found at Azotas. He was found. I love the way the scripture says it. He was found. I feel there's something rich there. He was found. He didn't find himself. He wasn't shocked when he's in Azotas. No. He was found in Azotas, right? And you see this man of the spirit, not even going about to say, can you believe one day he disappeared and I appeared? You know, because he was, there was, there were things he was conscious of in the spirit. You are what the world taught you that you are. You are what you saw on television that you are. But there is way more out in this world that is not on TV. That is in the ability of men to be and do. In its own, it becomes a limitation and bondage to you. Because you feel like what media gives you is human ability. They put everything on television, what human beings are. They put in news what human beings are. So, you, you're raised... In what men make you believe that you are, not necessarily what you are. Do you understand what I'm saying? There is a consciousness that you're carrying in your head of what you think is success, for example. Because you read it in a certain book, Demand and Supply, you see? Do you understand what I'm saying? Income and what? Expenditure. Cash flows, balance sheets. You understand what I'm saying? But there are things that 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 world can't explain. But they are fitted in the gospel. Because if I say houses you, you didn't build, there is nothing that explains that in accounts. Vineyards you never planted. There is nothing that explains that. In economics. Nothing explains that. Some of you think that you all, let me tell you, some of you think that you have to follow certain, a certain pattern to be a success in this world. But not everybody uses it. The richest men in the world didn't use that process. Do you understand what I'm saying? 
But as a church, we had a responsibility. He told us that you shall be the heads and not the tail. You'll be above and not beneath. You shall lend to nations and not need to borrow. You shall lend. You shall lend. The other day I was reading the internet and I saw that Apple, the company, right, is now richer than the Russian stock exchange market. When I looked at their assets and I divided them by our GDP, the amount of money we use as a nation, Apple, the company, can look after Uganda for 25 years. <laughs> this was a man's brain. He, he had a certain revelation. And he wasn't speaking in tongues. Tell your neighbor, robos di bakashe le mande. He didn't even live to see it succeed to now. But also in Uganda, we have rich people. <laughs> That is why I tell people, I have now started to build a consciousness in my spirit that we are first world. Because we are not going to become first world by hard work. We are going to become first world by a certain revelation. Righteousness imputed while uncircumcised and receiving the seal of circumcision. Fulfilling the righteousness that we had before we were circumcised. We must believe. Tell your neighbor, we must believe. We must believe. Tell somebody, I must believe. And you might wake up tomorrow and check your pocket and there is nothing. But don't be dismayed. Don't be dismayed. The Bible says that the things that you see are temporal. Everything that you see is temporal. But the things that are not seen are eternal. The beginning of that faith, the beginning of that faith is seeing the things that are not seen. For by faith we understand that the world was framed by the word of God so that the things that are seen were not brought about by the things which do appear. I have a present continuous consciousness of things I see in my spirit. And that is, nobody can take it away by human opinion. Tell your neighbor, you can't take it away by your opinion. <laughs> Listen, the church is behind because there's a certain gospel that is hid. No, Acts 19.20 tells you. He tells you that when they were in Ephesus, they preached the gospel. Right? In fact, in the verses before, the Bible says, power moved. Move, move up, move up. Mm-hmm. The Bible says, and this was known to all Jews and Greeks, all dwelling at Ephesus. And the Bible says, and fear fell on all. Be, fe, wait. God used the church until men started to fear. Do, do you see how Christians sometimes can't go places and say, ah, me, I can't go there, I fear. Uh, what do you, to go? you understand? One time we were in Hong Kong and we went street preaching. I had a meeting two days later and I said, I'm bored. Why don't I go street preaching? So I got a woman who can speak some English, who went street preaching. You understand? And then we reached a certain area where they put cards, eh? Tarot what, cards what, palm readers. There were about 200 of them. They were in a big, big... They give, they give them a certain uh, plaza area where they sit and start reading. So, a certain guy was with us and he was a pastor, born and raised, I think, in... In the, in, 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 born actually in, the United, in Hong Kong but raised in the United States he was speaking very nice English so the guy, we get to the place where we're going to preach he says, ah, I ain't going there man, I ain't going there he says, why, there's a witch there she can put a hex on me and I die so we left the pastor behind he was conscious, right so I reached somewhere <laughs> and this woman we, we went into like a certain thing where there was a woman who used to read funny things. She had a thing on the table. She saw me. She said, oh, Light! Light! <laughs> light! They know you! <laughs> For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness 
has shined in our hearts to give the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. Tell your neighbor of the light. So, he was conscious. Right? Now the Bible says, they preached the gospel to all Jews and Greeks, all dwelling at Ephesus, and fear fell on all of them, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. As in, do you know a place where God moves and people start to fear? And the next verse says, And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. And the Bible says, And many of them which also used curious acts, brought their books together, burned them before all of them, and they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. I don't know how much that is. So, the Bible says, So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Listen, he didn't say, and they prevailed. He says, so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. That means the word has its own inherent power to prevail if it is preached in truth. If the word is preached in truth, it has its own inherent power to prevail. When we preach truth, you start to see the lives of men changing. You don't even need a deliverance class of 24 hours. No. Preach the truth. For when a man knows the truth, the truth shall make a man free. But we don't even invest in revelation. Churches are like shrines. Musumban Savida. Bah, then the guy falls and he goes away. Musumban Savida. Bah, then he goes away. Musumban Savida. Bah, then he goes away. Yes, it's okay to pray for you. But there is more. There is more. All of these fivefold ministries are perfecting saints for the work of ministry to the edification of the body. Why is it that I cannot see a prevailing experience of the word of God in me if indeed I received truth? If indeed I received truth, why? Hallelujah. It's because there's some that is hidden. Look at Christianity. Do you know there are people who don't even want to become born again? Because when they look at us, they're like, ah, 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 nah. I'll, I'll get saved when I'm going to die. That moment, that last minute, like, yes, then I go, flip. And that is why me and you are going to redefine the gospel. Men are going to look at you and they say, ay, 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 do you believe it? I believe it too. I'm conscious of what is free. I'm conscious of what is free. I'm conscious of what is free. Let, let's continue in Corinthians. Now, this is the spiritual man, you and I. Listen, he tries all things, right? And the Bible says, he examines, investigates, inquires into, questions and designs all things. Yet he himself is to be, himself to be put on trial and judged, and judged by no one. And he can read the meaning of everything, but no one properly designs or appraises or can get an insight. Do you know, do you know what that means? Where you can read and design and appraise everything. You, you can look at something and say, no, this one spiritually is true. This one is not true, spiritually. And he says, yet you yourselves cannot be appraised, because you're unpredictable. And the next verse says, for who has known, and I love this, who has known or understood the mind, the counsels and purposes of the Lord, so as to guide and instruct him and give him what? Knowledge. But the Bible says that, Come on, read it. We have the what? The mind of Christ. Uh-huh. The Messiah. And we what? We hold the very... Uh-huh. Feelings and... Oh! Who knows the mind of God to instruct him? <laughs> but we have. Who has, who has known the counsels of God and purposes... And he says, but we have the mind which 
is of Christ. Can you imagine where the Christ is now? Does Jesus worry? What would make him worry? So stop visiting. And, and that's why I'm trying to tell you that there are people eh, who don't understand. Let me read for you something. We're going to come back there. Let me read for you something. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 19. I'm going to read for you some. Let's read. He says, For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God, for it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. But the Bible says, And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. And therefore, let no man glory in men, for all things are Do you know what it means not to glory in men? Don't look at a man who is calm and admire him. Don't look at a carnal man in the flesh and admire him. He says, for all things are yours. All things are yours. And the next verse says, whether Paul, his revelation, or Apollos, or Peter, or the world, or life, or death, all things present, all things to come. He says, all things are yours. And the next verse says, and you are Christ's. And Christ is God's. Let me preach for a few minutes. <laughs> Let me preach for a few minutes. Everything is yours. Everything is yours. Everything is yours. You see, some people say, let's pray to Jesus. Because he owns everything. <laughs> but now you're joint heirs. In fact, the statement ought to be, let's thank Jesus because we own. We're co-heirs with him. You remember the, the, the scripture people read in Isaiah where they say that your ways are not my ways, neither my thinking, your thinking. Like I always tell people that there are truths that are above other truths. That is why Peter speaks of how men ought to know and be established in the present truth. There are truths that are higher than other truths. Back in the day, and I hear Christians always saying it, you know, let us pray. His ways are not our ways. Neither his thinking, our thinking. Maybe you're suffering this way because his ways are not your ways. How do you know what God is thinking? Oh, 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 oh. He said you have the mind. Now, 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 you can't say that God's ways are not your ways. No, now his ways are your ways. Now he's thinking, you're thinking. The Bible says he has made known unto us the mystery of his will. Everything that God has planned, we carry a present continuous consciousness. That he has revealed. It's not a progressive knowledge gnosko. It's a big gnosis by faith. There are things you can't pick in the spirit realm until you learn to walk by faith. The distinctions of revelation start to create divine abilities. And out of those divine abilities, the Bible says he's likened unto a man who out of him, the Bible says, floweth both new and old. People misunderstand faith. Let me tell you something. When a man carries the mind of Christ, the future is not a mystery. <laughs> Even when prophecy comes and they say, I see this happening in your life, you receive it as a confirmation of a pre-affirmed experience in Christ. But today I see Christians receiving prophecy as a, an affirmation. <gasps> Are you sure? Oh. You see, you're supposed to receive it this way. When they say, I see this happening in your life, you say, Rabba Kota. That's a confirmation. That is a confirmation. Why? Because you carry the affirmation of things. The certainty of truth has revealed to you that all these things are yours and more. The mind of Christ is not surprised of what you're going to be. But it's beautiful when it's confirmed. But it's a problem if it's directed to a man 
Who carries no affirmation? It doesn't matter how much is spoken in your life. If you don't carry the affirmation, it's just a word. You see, people don't understand that the dispensation of this reconciliation begins from deep calling and too deep. When certain things are spoken in your soul or to you when you're a new creature, when they say, I see that you It's like when I say, there are people who God is opening ears for. I didn't need... There are people in, who knew that this is me. There was another one saying, God, I wish even me I'm among... You see? But there's a, a person who knew that this must be me. Why? Because they're in one witness. That's why Paul says that my spirit bears witness with the Holy Spirit of what is true. That means that the primary witness of every word spoken in your soul must carry a confirmation inside you. That's a New Testament creature. That's a New Testament creature. Everything they say, you know it inside you that this is me. You're going to be this. I am Rabakota. This must be me. Rabakonde Lekosa. This is me. That's why it tells us, hold on to that which is true. Hold it. Get it with your spirit. Receive it. When they say this year, you're increasing. Don't even ask. The lines have fallen unto you in pleasant places. You have a goodly heritage. Were you born to fail? You cannot fail. You cannot be conscious of failure. Forget the spelling. Forget it. Forget it. Forget it. Even things can come and they start to convince you otherwise. You are believing God for something. That is the day they even fire you. You realize that you are increasing and then you even go below. And then you say, all oh, things work together for the good of them that love him and are called according to his purposes. I refuse to be disadvantaged. I refuse to be disgruntled. For you have plans for me. Plans to make me prosper and not to harm me. To give me that future, that hope, that expected end. You that began a good work in me shall see it to accomplishment to the day of Christ. You are the author and the finisher of my faith. You never fail. You never fail. You never fail. I refuse to fail. Tell anybody I refuse to fail. Faith. Let me tell you something I discovered about faith. Right? Let me tell you something I discovered about faith. Faith is the grace to be conscious of an affirmed future and the ability to manifest it every other day. Because it's evidence of things not seen. Do you know you can create something tomorrow morning? Tomorrow morning you can wake up and say, tomorrow this must happen. The plan of God is not what He placed in your life to walk into only. The plan of God are everything He has made ready for you. Right? You remember how the scripture says? That eye has not seen, he has not heard, has not entered into the hearts of men, what the Lord has prepared for them that love him. Give me the, 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 the amplified of that. I understand something. On, the scriptures say, I has not seen, he has not heard, and has, ent- has not entered into the heart of man. All that God has prepared, listen, made and keeps ready for those who love him, who hold him in affectionate reverence, promptly obeying him and gratefully recognizing the benefits. Again, you see, he has bestowed. Now, if he has said that he has kept ready all these things, and he tells you whether the world is ready, whether things present, they are ready, whether things to come, he said they are ready. That means that the things of this world are like this. Even when you walk away, they follow. Woo! Tell them never in Luganda, Tevidi not choice. Tell them again, Tevidi not choice. I am persuaded that I cannot fail. 
I am persuaded that you will not fail. Paul says, brethren, we are persuaded of greater things that accompany us. I am sure what you're going through is temporal. I am sure. I am sure what you're going through is temporal. I'm sure about that. So you build your spirit. When you learn to live in a certain place, you start acting like one who lives there. Some people wake up in the morning and say, Nayemo, come and call your wabu, right? Wake up out of your small little bed, that one inch mattress, and fall on it again and say, what happened? That the communication of your faith might become effectual through the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you, which is in Christ. Don't be intimidated by circumstances. He says, for our light afflictions, which are but for a moment. They are but for a moment. HIV, but for a moment. Cancer, but for a moment. For our light affliction, which are but for a moment. He says, workers, they work for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory and he says how how while we look not at failing to pay tuition at that old shack you're living into he says why we look not at the things that are seen for the things which you see are temporal but the things you don't see are eternal give me the amplified of that the amplified says since we consider how can we have a weight of glory in things since we consider and look not to the things that are seen, but to the things which are unseen. For the things which are visible are temporal. They are brief. They are fleeting. But the things that are invisible, what are they? Deathless. <laughs> when I look at the wealth on you, it's deathless. When I look at the anointing on your life, when I think of the wisdom on your life, deathless. When I think of the glory on your life, deathless. Power, deathless. Multiplication, increase. Establishment. The word mightily grew and prevailed. Some people won't be careful. You might wake up one day the money you're spoiling when you're poor. Oh. You're conscious that at a particular point you can fail. I'm not conscious about it. I refuse to be conscious of poverty. I refuse to be conscious of strife. I refuse to be conscious of failure. Why? Because everything that now comes to my spirit is a confirmation of the affirmed things through epignosis. The new man, the Bible says, has been created in epignosis. We carry the advanced knowledge of things because we carry the life of those things. It's too late for you to fail. It's too late. It's too late. It can all go and the next day you have more than what left. Why? Because you still carry the source. When a man, let me say this and probably I'll finish. When a man carries the affirmation of things revealed through truth, right? If the confirmation is not spoken to them, they'll speak it to themselves. I don't know that you understand what I'm saying. There is a realm I have seen where some people think that this is what God planned for you to be this. 
and this and this and this. And that's the end of life. That's what some people are conscious about. But I've realized through the Bible that true freedom is choice. True freedom is choice. He comes to a man and tells him, Somebody can say, I planned for you to do this. God knew that I would never go past this much, these people, this life. And then a man brings you a statement like, whatsoever you ask when you pray. Believe that you have received it, then you shall have whatsoever you have said. That is whether God intended it for you or he didn't intend it for you. He said, whatsoever. And he said, whosoever. That means the true place of freedom is choice. The choice by how much has been revealed to you to determine what you want. That place of freedom comes with a divine contentment where with no man can last. Because lust is wishful desire, a power with no purpose. But when a man is aligned to truth, everything that is availed to you comes with purpose. Why? Because there's a reason why these things are in your spirit. The only problem is many people visit there on Sunday when the preacher preaches. And on Thursdays when the preacher shares it. They don't live there. Make a solid decision in your spirit to live in a certain place. And once you make that decision, you will be so surprised how everything is going to start aligning itself. Because of what you are conscious about. I tell people, what you are aware of grows on you. If you think you're a weak person, you will stay weak. People can have opinions about you and say, no, I think she has hit shipwreck. I think this guy uh, uh, is coming to an end of things. But that's them. They don't know the covenant you share with God. They don't know what God told you according to his words. You cannot settle for what men say. You cannot settle for what the opinions say. You cannot settle for what situations and circumstances say. Stop visiting where you ought to live. Live there. Live there. God has called you to live in certain places. If you're conscious that I'm a blessed man, whether you have money or not, let it stay an ever fixed mark in your spirit that I'm blessed. It's like some of you have believed God for healing for so many years and you're never going to be healed. Why? Because healing to you is a visitation. The Bible says very clearly in scripture that he became sin that you know sin. He became sin that you might become a righteousness. And he says by whose stripes you were healed. That was a place. The church is moving out of the miracle of healing into the distinction of divine health. You don't need to fall sick in the first place. I am conscious in me every time. In spite of every circumstance that happens in my life, God has taught me to stay in my place. Whether it's working then or it's not working, I don't frustrate the, God, the grace of God upon my life. Situations can't throw me down to think, oh, because I'm going through this, therefore something is happening to me. I think let me increase in prayer. I, no, 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 no. Listen, epignosis has revealed to me who I am in him. And I am confident of what I must be in this world. He told me I shall be the head and not the tail. He told me I shall be above and not beneath. And yes, he chose the foolish thing of this world. The Bible says that he has given the kingdom of men to the bestest of them all. He's not giving us because we have the ability. He has given us because he has the ability. That he might shame the wise. Stop visiting financial prosperity. Stay there. 
Stop visiting divine health. Stay there. Some people are conscious. Oh, I'm believing God uh, to get a job. Your brain is not is jobless. They try and find out. Do you have a job? No, I don't have. No, tell them I'm working. I just want to change to another one. Communicate faith. Live somewhere and stay there. Stay there. In spite of the circumstances. Even when you sit in a taxi, there are people who are up and then they fell down a bit. And it was just a tweak from hell to see if they would lose their faith. And then they fell for it. I, uh, I think I've fallen. No, you have not fallen. God still has it. The Bible says, His designs on you. He still does. But stop visiting where you must live. Tell your neighbor, stop visiting where you must live. Faith. Being the evidence of things not seen. I have realized this for a fact. That evidence is not necessarily the car. Evidence is not necessarily the house. Evidence is the ability to create. Because the Greek word for substance is material. That's why when the Bible speaks of men which are unskillful in the word, he speaks of the skill that meets material and a man creates. Some of you think that you want to reconcile what is faith and what God created you in this world to do. And you don't understand that the shepherd leads to greener pastures and still waters, but does not determine how much you eat, nor how much you drink. That's called freedom. That's the ministration of the chief shepherd and the bishop of our souls. He's just leading us to an endless, bottomless place. And he tells you now, you choose. And he says that these words shall not depart from thy mouth. Thou shalt meditate therein day and night. That thou mightst observe to do according to what is written in there. And he says then, you, not me God, you shall make your way prosperous and have good success. God is not going to tell you how rich you're going to be. You determine. God is not going to tell you how successful you're going to be. You determine. God is not going to tell you how long. No. You determine it and say, me, this is what I believe God for. And that now starts to enter the meditation of your spirit. And then it stops. It starts to come out of your mouth. Because the word meditation also carries the word to matter. You learn to speak certain things. Every other morning you say, I am this. 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 A woman one time came to me about a year and a half back and told me, Apostle, me, I have lived good for marriage. I've grown old. I've failed. And I asked her, what does the Bible say about marriage? She looked at me like, what do you mean? The Bible says he that finds a wife finds a good thing and gains seven eyes of God. Are you a woman or your wife? What do you mean, apostle? I told her being a wife is an anointing. If you don't put it on you, you won't be found. <laughs> find it. Find it. Find it. You know what do you mean? Start acting like a wife. Stop talking like a woman. Acting like, you're like a woman. You're watching movies of women. Think like a man, act like a woman. <laughs> Are you hearing me? A healing machine starts to act like a healing machine. You walk like a healing machine. Are you hearing me? When you wisdom, you start walking like a wise person. You don't walk like a loser. Because you're conscious of who you are. If you never act that part, you can never walk into it. You can't. But the problem is not that our people don't know the truth. The problem is they've refused to stay there. Situations drop them back down. Now from today, make us a promise to God and tell him, Mukama, from today, where you've, you've placed me, 
is where I'm going to stay. No circumstance is going to draw me out. Nothing is going to change my confession. Nothing. That's called spiritual warfare. So somebody will then will ask me, if you're saying that this is advanced knowledge and it's absorbed gnosis and it is the basis of what is affirmed in your spirit to be confirmed by anybody else, so then how do I now walk and understand fully the affirmation of things? And I'll, exp- I'll explain to you this way. God created man in his own image and likeness. Right? When the Bible says that you have the mind which is of Christ, it is not the constant effort of trying to find out what he thinks because that makes you slower in the spirit. It is the conscious conviction in your spirit every day that I am thinking what he is thinking. It's not what would Jesus do. It's what is Jesus doing. Because faith is now. That means that when you look at a situation like this, any circumstance in your life, think it exactly the way Christ is thinking it. There are things that Christ cannot be conscious about. You should never be conscious about anymore in spite of anything in your life. You might even go back to the doctor and they tell you, by the way, we checked your heart and you have worsened. That is nothing. Some of you, when they first check you and then they say it has gone back for you to believe you're healed. Even if your heart became as big as that speaker, it's not its size that kills you. It's your spirit. That's where he has placed eternity. That's where we guard our hearts in Christ. That's where we guard it. Now we are no longer seeking the will of God. He has made known. And the beginning of that is you have to believe it in your soul. That you carry the mind of God. That you carry the mind of the spirit. When you start that way, you're going to be shocked at how many things people are going to start to see in your life happening. And every time they see them, they'll say, this is God. This is God. This is God. This is God. I decree upon your life, in the name of Jesus, that things are going to radically change in your life. I decree upon your life that the hidden gospel now is revealed. The end of visitations has come. Now it's dwelling there. Whether it's in the heavenly places in Christ, whether it's in the affirmation of things truly bestowed unto you, whether it's the freedom and free things God has lavishly bestowed unto you, start to live there. Some of you get to situations sometimes and things become hard and then you draw back to perdition. But the Bible says that we are not of them which draw back to perdition. But it says that we are of them which believe up to the saving of the soul. In other words, you believe it and believe it and believe it and believe it unwaveringly and continue believing it until the soul is delivered. The Bible says we are not of them which draw back to perdition. No situation and circumstance should make you lose it. I know you believed God for six years and nothing happened. But that doesn't change God's will concerning your life. I know you believed for a child for six years and you have not seen that child. But stay believing. Hold on to your confession. The Bible says that if we begin, we we hold fast the beginning of our confidence until the end. He says we protect Christ. Stop visiting the blessing. Stay there. Stop visiting the experiences. Stay there. Regardless of what happens, refuse to ever draw back through negative thoughts. Refuse to ever draw back through negative thinking. Refuse to ever draw back through the opinions of men. Refuse to ever draw back through what some people think. Everything happening in your life and is not desirable. I decree upon your life, it is only but for a moment. But when Christ, which is your real life, is revealed, the Bible says you shall appear with him 
Don't lose hope. Don't lose faith. Don't grow weary. Don't be discouraged. Indeed, He is the author and the finisher of your faith. He knows exactly what He's doing on you. And as surely as day is, seed and harvest, summer and winter, cold and heat, day and night, what you're sowing in your spirit will indeed come to fulfillment. God is no man that he should lie. I decree the fulfillment of the word of God in your life. And I speak in the name of Jesus that men will see you and fear. That God will work wonders through you. That he will do things through you. And men will look at you and fear. That you carry the affirmation of things in your spirit. The blessing on your life I decree. No man can ever take away. No situation can ever take away. Because when he called you. The Bible says he called you to glory. And virtue. This world is yours. All things are yours. Even the things that are present. Even the things that are to come. 2017 is mine. 2018 is mine. 2020 is mine. 2030 is mine. He said it's not unto the angels that he submitted the worlds to come. But unto us. That means even in the years to come. The environment will be subject to you. The political status will be subject to you. The social systems will be subject to you. The justice systems will be subject to you. The military will be subject to you. No circumstance can change the affirmations the Lord has placed in your soul. Tell yourself, I believe it. Tell yourself, I believe it. I believe it. There are people here, a particular category of people, Certain things happened in your life and you lost faith. And you stopped to believe. Your heart told you maybe this is not mine. Maybe God you have called me for something different. Maybe it's not your will for me to be this and be that. I came to speak to your spirit. Stop visiting blessing. Stop visiting the assigned places. Stop falling off your estate. Because men which fall up into a state of their estate are taken back to perdition. They are taken back to bondage. Stay true to what God has placed in your soul. It will be fulfilled. It will be fulfilled. The quicker you give yourself to it, the quicker it will come. The quicker your conscience to it the quicker it will come but you must believe you must stay believing you must stay believing I know it has taken so long but that's what the devil wants to make you convinced that because it's not sin therefore it's not yours but I decree upon your life that God gives you strength strength comes to you strength comes to you in the name of Jesus Christ I see nations opening up for some people. And you're not going to enter them disadvantaged. You're not going to go into them as survivors. You're going to enter into them as saviors. For the Bible says, saviors shall come from Zion. And the Bible says, great things are said of thee, O Zion. Isaiah 55 says that you shall leap with joy and the trees shall clap. Who are trees? Those will be men. Because they are the planting of the Lord. Men will see what is in your life and they will clap and say, this is the God of Rebecca Grace. This is the God of Isaac. This is God, the God of Jacob. Put your name. They will say, this is his God. That's what he says. That's what he says. That's what he says. Nothing can take away what I believe. Tell your neighbor, I know who I am. Tell him, I know who I am. I know who I am. 
I remember days we used to sit on border borders and we were going to preach. And then you get to a preaching ground and dust has hit your whole face and your collar is dirty. And you're telling them, God is big. God is big. God is wonderful. God can do exceedingly, abundantly above that which you hope or dare to ask. Man! I'm a believer. Tell your neighbor, I'm a believer. Now I want you to give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. Come on, clap for God. As you're clapping, things are changing in your favor. Because it's a proclamation of your faith. You're believing it to be true. I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. I have a story. I have a testimony. Oh, Rabakote. What eye has not seen, what ear has not heard, what has not entered the hearts of men. Yes, I'm still alive. And I will not die until I see the goodness of the Lord. In the land of the living. Say amen. Come on, say amen. If you're here and you've never given your life to Christ, I want you to put up your hand and say, I want Jesus today. Come. If you put up, come. Say, I want to be born again. Come, 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 come. Oh, I'm changing this world. Oh, let's wave to the guys live streaming. Mokono is live streaming. Isaka is live streaming. Kavale is live streaming. Kulu is live streaming. I mean those universities. Who else? Then there are also those personal people across the world. We love you. Come and give your life to Christ as we get out of here. Any other? Ever true Changing me And changing you We have come In glory Anybody else? Now repeat these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe with my heart that you died and rose again. I confess with my mouth from today that I am born again. Tell him, Lord, I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. Today, I am born again. Say today, I am born again. In Jesus' mighty name. Say amen. See you guys next week. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. 
For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at funerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.funero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest.